All right, please welcome Sherry, uh, Carrie Scharfglass, uh, talking about alternative user inter interfaces for KiCad. He's a firmware engineer by trade who has worked on everything from internet connected door locks to iPhone cases with active jamming capabilities. When the code, uh, when the code gets too frustrating, it turns to the tool bench to figure out how to use the mill or bodge together products in KiCad. Please welcome Carrie. Hi, I'm Kerry. Uh, I'm here to talk to you about other ways to drive KiCad, maybe. So, like, let's just to cut to the end before getting to the end. Um, <laughs> so, the things I did were build some pieces of hardware, ultimately. Um, why I built them. Uh, so, this is, uh, <laughs> again, cutting to the end. If, if you ask yourself in, like, 20 minutes, boy, why did you go through all this effort when the keyboard and the mouse work really well, uh, to be clear, this was a totally uh, masturbatory process. This was this was because I wanted something cool, not because this was going to be better. Though there are eventually some things which maybe are better. Um, so, th so the real genesis here is this computer called the Surface Studio. Microsoft uh, released the first one a couple years ago and revved it again last year. So I thought to myself, boy, this is like a three and a half to four and a half thousand dollar computer. But God, I really want one because like, oh. Yeah, so good. They're just, they're truly just incredible, unbelievable products. Um, and they come with some cool stuff. So this is the computer, but it's for creatives. So it comes with two interesting accessories. It comes with a pen, pen, pen. Uh, and it comes with the dial, which is this thing down here, um, which is a really cool, basically milled, bead blasted aluminum cylinder, like a perfect geometric object. Um, with a uh, rotary encoder and tactile feedback and a button, all of this stuff. Um, and you can like do all sorts of things with it. You can like put it on the screen and their demo is you like put it on the screen and you get like this radial interface that you can interact with the knob. And that's actually baked into Windows and it does work and it is really friggin' cool. Um, the pen also drawing on like a, how was it, is it a 28 inch, whatever it is. I think it's a 20, 28 or 30 inch um, display. It's just like, it's, it's just so, it's just so cool. Um, okay, so. I'm not an artist, uh, and it's very expensive. So how do I justify buying one <laughs> in, the, in the least transparent, maybe probably most transparent way possible? Um, so look at these happy people. Uh, they're drawn, I guess not happy trees, because they're kind of using drafting tables, so happy architectural diagrams with trees. Um, so it's like, this is, this is what it's built, like this is what the Surface Studio is built for, is to, is to be used as an easel for these type of drafting applications. Um, so like, Back in the day, in the, the days of my forefathers and foremothers, um, I have heard tale that people did electrical engineering by hand on paper. So then the question is, how do we, can we do this? Can we like put the keycad on the, on the big drawing table? Uh, that was good enough, so I bought one. Um, <laughs> that was all it took. Uh, you'll, you'll notice I actually I <laughs> bought this with funds from a previous project, those funds were in cash, so I spent four and a half thousand dollars in cash at the Microsoft store, which is, which was just a fun experience, which I would recommend to anyone. Um, they got a kick out of it. Also, the Microsoft store doesn't keep four and a half thousand dollars in cash on hand, so they cut you a check when you return it. Um, we'll get there later. <laughs> Surprise! That's not a use case for them. Um, so I bought it. Here it is on my, uh, in front of my couch being used as an easel. This is ergonomically poor, but sitting in front of the TV with your hyper easel is just <laughs> so cool. Um, so, so this is, we'll call this V1 of alternative user interfaces for KiCad. So this is me building uh, a smartwatch board, which I have floating around somewhere, um, trying to use the dial and the pen. Um, so, okay, so let's talk about what the dial does, because the, the dream here is like, we're gonna use the dial. That's gonna, the dial is gonna make this work. Dial and pen, it's gonna be great. You can see the dial is actually, it's like doing stuff. Um, again, that's built into Windows, so you can configure the, w what each of the settings of the dial. You can configure um, elements on the tool palette, and you can actually configure it per application in Windows, and you can configure um, clockwise, counterclockwise, and press gestures, um, and then you long press to bring up the tool palette, and you can select a new tool. So um, it's customizable. F some applications have built-in support. Most don't. None do. They're like literally 20, I think, um, things that do. Um, so it, it like, God, it's just so cool, all the promo materials. Every time I watch these things, I'm like, darn, I should buy one of these. 
Um, so, like, so like this is what it's supposed to do, right? This is like literally it's a, it's a cool rotating tool palette. Um, this is what it ends up being. 100% of the time I showed this computer to someone, we used paint. And we did this in paint. You can see it's a color picker. This is, I think, the only useful application I ever found for the $100 beautiful milled cylinder. Um, but it's a great, boy, paint with the Surface Studio. It's the best $5,000 paint experience you'll ever have. <laughs> um, so this is, this is just awful. This is, this is a misery. Um, it doesn't work at all. You need more. You can, you can really only customize it just barely enough to think it'll be useful, but it's not. Um, for a million reasons which aren't worth going into because I have the rest of the talk to give. Um, you can't, you really need, you really need uh, hotkey or hotkeys, um, shortcuts and stuff to drive KeyCAD. You, you probably all know that. You really, you really need that. It's, this isn't good. Um, I also tried this with the on-screen keyboard. That is also not good. <laughs> um, you can't, there are, I mean, there are a bunch of problems. The weirdest, most first world problem, -y problem is that the tablet, the screen is so big it's just so inconvenient to move your arm to the tool palette, move your arm back from the tool palette, which is a, is a very real problem. It's just a very stupid one. Um, the real problem is viewport manipulation it just doesn't work. Um, the touchpad support for KiCad, which I've now used on Mac and Linux and Windows, the touchpad support is awesome, actually. It works really well, um, but it doesn't, it doesn't like scale here because what you get when you do a pinch is a zoom, which sort of does what you want, but mostly doesn't. Um, so you end up with a lot of like uh, reset to view all, zoom in, or, or like re uh, reset and then do like the drag select viewport thing. Um, anyway, so it makes me look cool, but serve no other purpose. Um, this is V1.1, which was literally hanging a keyboard, like placing a keyboard on top of the display. Um, this was bad, but slightly better. Um, it turns out I, a while ago, built this little half-size keyboard, um, which is like a neat, but useless widget. Um, so the next version was like, okay, I'll put this thing like next to the display and plug it in. This was also really bad. Uh, I think at least largely because I never got good at using a keyboard because you have to like cord four or five fingers to hit some of the different functions, which is pointless. Um, okay, so like it was better with a keyboard, but it wasn't, was not good. <laughs> um, okay, so obviously we're gonna solve this contrived hardware problem by building hardware. Um, okay, so then I built the paw, or the thing which eventually became known as the paw, because I didn't know what else to call it. So that's this, this little guy. So it's got, um, what is this, nine keys, uh, and there were kind of two versions. So the first one was this one. Um, so this white, there's a white dial under here, or whatever, is sized to perfectly fit the surface dial. So the, the plan was you put the dial in the center of it, and then it has little feet on the bottom, and so you put it on your desk, and then you hold your hand over the dial and use the keys. Um, this works in the sense that you can literally place all the components in this orientation, but it doesn't work because the dial is, you can't, there's no way to tie the function of the dial to the, the state of the keys, which makes it basically useless. Fortunately, I had already designed it with those nice holes so that you could uh, attach a rotary encoder. This, this was a lot, this was the first time it was like, oh, maybe I could use this for something. Um, incidentally, I have a bunch of these blank PCBs if anyone wants to build one. It's just a, it's a teensy with some Cherry MX switches, so come find me later, I don't wanna take them home. Um, so these are all the things that I sort of bound to it. So the, the, the keys had two modes, basically, or two ways that you could use them. Um, there was like the momentary function for when you press them and release them, and then if you press and held, you could do this like, oh, did I take the picture out? I guess I did. Um, so the way it was designed to work was you press and hold and then with your thumb you reach down and you can turn the knob. That actually works really well. Um, the human hand is wonderfully dexterous and that was, the knob is big and easy to turn and that's actually super comfortable um, and really good. And it's, it's really, especially with a wrist rest, really not bad at all to have your hand sit on this guy and, and like use it. So there are a bunch of functions which sort of had like plus minus rotary functionality. So there's an escape key because that's maybe the most important key in KiCad. Um, so if you hold down escape and then knob, you get undo and redo. Um, it was a key you could press to, to start laying a track, and if you press and held, then it would adjust track size with rotation. Um, the coolest one is definitely move, where you hover over the thing in momentary to, to hit M and pick up the part and then press and hold and rotate to rotate the part, and the like experience of like holding it and rotating it and using the pen is like some Iron Man stuff right there. Um, 
It's worth keeping in mind this. So this is designed to be used with a giant touchscreen. So you have a pen in one hand and you have this funny like cording controller in the other hand. Um, so, so this was an improvement. This was better than I expected. Um, knobs are good. It, it really had to be programmable and this gave me the flexibility to um, adjust the knobs function depending on the state of the rest of the device. It supported multiple layouts. There's a little screen on top which would tell you what the key you were pressing did, which was really useful. Um, really the learning was that almost everything or many more things than I expected are the like plus minus plus tap type function and having one knob and having to cord all of those was like, nah, fine, but could be better. Um, so I returned to Surface Studio because of course I returned to Surface Studio. At this point, it had been like a few months and I was at the end of my return window and I had scratched that itch very completely and I did not need to continue owning it. So I sold the whatever thousands of dollars Surface Studio and got this like super beaten uh, Surface Book, which is great. <laughs> Strongly recommended, more than an order of magnitude less expensive. Because I still wanted a Windows computer, I wanted a touch and pen Windows device that you could plug stuff into and so that ended up boiling down to this thing. Um, okay, so then I built V3, more knobs, more better. Um, you can see, oh, there we go. I guess this is what it, sort of what it looks like when you use it. It's really hard to take pictures of because you need both hands to use it. So then I don't, I don't own a tripod. Um, okay, so there was like some spacing and planning, uh, and then I built this guy, v, V3. So it's still a teensy. Um, it has a lot more buttons and obviously a lot more knobs because more knobs, more better. Um, it's also, it's like a multi-part plastic chassis, so it has a few different components you can swap into the bottom. Um, so each of these rotary en encoders has click um, on, the, on the paw. I used encoders that have had R an RGB LED, which is so cool. These don't have RGB LEDs because that was just money. Um, so it has a bunch of buttons. It has the big button in the middle, which is escape, because escape is the most important button in KeyGAD. Um, and then there's a bunch of buttons on the front, and then they're hard to see, and they were never used, but there are actually four buttons on the back, and the intent was that, um, here, let me take this out of its, the intent was that you would mount it onto the side of your computer, like <laughs> this, basically, and then, oh. of course, oh, that was foolish, I flew too close to the sun there, okay. I'm not going to touch it anymore. Um, <laughs> so this attaches, it slots into this um, like sled. So it attaches to the side of your computer and it's sized specifically to fit the display of a Surface Book. Um, though obviously this is all, you know, 10 cent printed parts so that's easy to, to fix. And I did another, we'll get there in a second. Um, anyway, so the sideways buttons are intended so that you could, you could press them and they would sort of press like into the display. Um, so that's, this is what it looks like attached to this computer. Um, it's sort of, this rev obviously has a USB port on the end because it's the Teensy acting as a keyboard. So um, it's designed to be used when this computer is like folded shut and you like route the USB cable around it. I, I can show you later. Um, shout out to the Teensy for making all this USB keyboard emulation stuff. Just Teensy plus Arduino meant that writing all this firmware, including all the multi-layer support and everything, was like a, a two days or something. It was just an awesome experience. Um, so the other version of this case, so there's this one here that attaches to the side of the screen, and then there's this one, which doesn't really look like anything, but is, is keyed, so this part adapts, or is keyed to sit on the back of one of those little Apple keyboards. So if you, if you use one of the wide, flat, aluminum Apple keyboards, it has a, a rectangle on the back, which has a USB plug on either end. So this sits under that and, and attaches the knobs to the edge of the keyboard. So. Uh, that's actually like pretty good. So, so I, I bound most of the same functions um, to the knobs. That, that worked well. More knobs was more better indeed. Um, so this is way better than expected. Like way, way better than expected. Um, I kind of alluded to it earlier, but the, the move, rotate type functionality um, with the knobs is just like, oh, it's just such an, it's an incredible fit. It works so well. Um, most of the rest of the stuff was, was pretty good also. The knobs are hard to press, which is kind of inconvenient, but that's the, I don't know, about an off-the-shelf part. That's what I get. Um, this attachment mechanism is fine, but it's not great. Um, the actual intent was the pen attaches, oh, I shouldn't have touched it. The pen attaches magnetically to the side of the computer. Um, so the actual intent is to put some magnets in here also, and that I think will help keep it attached better. Um, but because it, it likes, you like have this thing in your, 
you can't hold it. So one hand needs to be able to use the knobs and stuff, and the other hand needs to use the pen, which means that you have no hands left to hold the device. So you like really have to be sitting at a table, which is fine. Um, discovery is really bad. So this doesn't doesn't even have like an orientation mark. It kind of does because the teensy hand gets out of one side, but. Um, it's really hard. You have to remember what all the controls do because I dropped the screen. Screen was really great, it turned out, for I pressed the button and I didn't know what the button, like nothing obviously changed. What was that button? Uh, screen. Screen is good for that. Um, I don't know. 3D printing is fun. It was kind of hard to, it took a bunch of iterations to get to the point where there was a case that mostly worked, but that's fine. Um, okay, so when it was good, or when this is good, present tense, um, it works really well. Like it, for some things, having dedicated buttons and knobs and stuff, which is like super good. Um, besides the fact that they're like fun to build, um, there are less good things. <laughs> having a finite number of controls is fine ninety percent of the time, and then the other ten percent of the time, you, you have to reach for a keyboard. So like, keep the keyboard around. You, you can't escape it. Um, it's the pure touchscreen experience is like really not good. Works fine on a phone for a lot of things, but for um, for like KiCad, it, it's just it's just not the same not to have real actual mechanical controls. Um, there were kind of weird human problems also. Uh, so if you're holding a pen, you like, the way this works is you like touch the pen down and when you touch the pen down it clicks. It does sense pressure, but it, it clicks. So there's like a tiny amount of human hand jitter, especially when you lift because you were applying pressure. You lift and it like moves a little bit and then you end up with parts that like, oh, I'm placing it in exactly the right place and then whoop, it's off by a grid square to the left. Um, and in some sense that really comes down to viewport controls again because by like zooming in enough or making it convenient to zoom in enough, that kind of gets a little better. Um, so, so what do we actually want here? I still, I still think there is not for everything, but for some things, the pen and touch like KiCad design experience is is really cool, and I think um, would be useful. So, so what what do we really need to make that work besides a, a funny hardware device? Um, so, the the real experience and <laughs> the answer to most of these is it's open source. Fix it yourself, which is. I'm gonna go to the learn how to contribute to KiCad talk, which is after lunch, I think. Because um, that's the, I'm going to figure that out. Um, really what you want is pen and touch to be separate sort of inputs. Um, you want, when the pen is near the screen, you want the pen as a mouse but as like nothing else and you want to be able to physically touch the screen with your fingers and do like viewport control with one hand and pen with the other hand, which is how some drawing apps and stuff work. Um, a floating tool palette of some sort would also be useful because um, you, you want it to be like near you. Um, if you had a palette that was that you could like drag around the screen or copy, um, that could be useful. That I think would be pretty easy to do in pure software. Um, some sort of pressure for press also might be useful. Um, some of that looks like integrating with Windows. You could even integrate um, to better support the dial, and then there's more weird Windows specific code. Um, so it's interesting to note there is actually a product sort of solving this problem um, called Loop Deck which is designed primarily for video and photo editing, but you'll notice they have a shitload of knobs <laughs> and a bunch of encoders and some LEDs and stuff. So it's like, and some funny, like pure keyboard emulation stuff you can see on the left. Um, so it's like an interesting, I was just doing some random casual research. You can find a bunch of macro pads and stuff also, but it's like an interesting, ah, oh, someone else saw this and they thought maybe we can do better than a pure keyboard. Um, so it's kind of like gratifying. Uh, anyway, I don't want to take any of these blank PCBs home. I have blanks for both of these, so please take them from me. Um, the hardware source files aren't up yet, but they will be. Um, all the firmware sources there if you want to look at it at some point. Um, yeah, I'm Kerry. Thank you for listening to my talk. <laughs>